Hello, and welcome to InSource Solutions Productions. My name is Lewis Talley, Technical Solutions Architect. And today, I'd like to talk to you about Web Services Made Easy. You may or may not be aware that Wonderware recently released a new operations integration server called Web Services. Simply put, this OI server was developed for supporting SOAP and REST transactions, just like a normal OI server. If I were talking to a PLC, for instance, but this one is specifically designed to communicate to web services. It was released on November 15th, 2017, and it can be downloaded from the Global Customer Support site where you would normally download other Wonderware software. Let's see what it looks like in action. As with other operations integration and DA servers, they are configured from within the system management console. So once I install the OI core and I install the OI web service, I should see the configuration element show up here. It's a very simple configuration. So I either have the choice of adding a SOAP connection or a REST connection. In this case, I set up a REST connection to Open Weather Map API, which allows me to query the current weather for a given city. So it accepts a parameter, which is the city name. So I defaulted to Midlothian. So in order to get this to work, you have to set up your own account. So I chose to use the free one. So you just go to the URL, openweathermap.org, and I set up a free account. So you're limited to you know, the things that you see here. So I can call 60 times a minute and the other limitations that you have there. But it's free and does the job for showing you how this works. So this is configured with a wizard. So the first step is you go in and specify the URL and then any parameters. And you can click Analyze and it'll go out and figure out what the parameters are for you. And the second step is to determine how the DH, the OI server is going to interact with the API. So in this, in this case, I'm, I'm using get, but the other options are post, put, and delete. And this is where it gets really cool. So I can actually go in and I can test what it's going to look like, which gives me a couple of things. So it tells me things like how long it took, which will become important later, and the number of items that it returned. So if I'm testing, I can very easily see, all right, here's the city. That's my default value. Here's the temperature. In this case, the temperature's in Kelvin, but we'll deal with that later. So we can see that this works. So remember that the response time is around 93 milliseconds. So from here, we can click this button to export to device items. Now, for those familiar with OI servers and DA servers, this is kind of like an alias list. So these are the result set that the REST call returns, but that's not very friendly if I'm going to be putting in object references or building graphics or historizing it to the Wonderware historian or other. So I can go export this to device items and create an alias, which is exactly what I've done. So you click the button, it builds the list for you over here. And I just made some more uh, user-friendly names rather than having to refer to them, the long, nasty, ugly reference there, right? So simply put temperature's temperature, humidity, humidity, city is city. So from the OI server perspective, that's all you have to do to configure it. Now the device group allows me to set up the update interval. Now setting that to zero means it's disabled. So there's a force update bit that you're going to set to true that's going to force a call out to the web server. So I would recommend setting this to zero because you don't want this thing constantly calling against the web, but you can you know, set that up to meet whatever your needs are. So let's switch over into the application server configuration. So for those familiar with application server, I've just built a simple Galaxy here. So the key here is I've got to have a DDE Suite Link client object that points to my operations integration web server. And its configuration is just the same as if I were talking to any other PLC platform, Control Logics, or other. I just grab the appropriate driver and configure it. So in this case, that's the name of the operations integration server there. I set up the topic, which lines up to what I defined as in the OI server. And then I've 
created another alias list so I can just take advantage of auto build inside of the application server IDE just to make my life a little bit easier. And then I just built a simple little object here that has a number of different parameters. And in this case, I'm converting the temperature from Kelvin to Fahrenheit. Just a simple math equation there. And I've got some graphics on it. So if you want to see what that looks like in runtime, this is what that looks like. So I've built a simple little graphic faceplate using one of the predefined graphics that has temperature and humidity. And in this case, if I change the city, so we can change this to say um, Miami, put my caps locks on. And then I'll force an update. So you can see the temperature jumped up quite a bit. So it's nice and pleasant in Miami. It's chilly where I'm at. So I hope you found this video to be informative. Uh, thank you for your time. Have a nice day.